So today I'm joined by Flea Chavas. So Flea is the owner of Parker and Boots Photography. So hi, Flea. Hi, Simon. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you very much. How, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, all good. Fantastic. So look, um, Flea, look, um, tell us a bit more about Parker and Boots Photography. Yeah, so I've been um, working as a photographer over the past 10, almost 11 years, I think now. Um, and it started sort of gradually and it's sort of built over the years. Um, I've been bringing up my kids at the same time. So it's sort of evolved slowly, I guess. Um, the last four years, it, it sort of changed quite a bit because I started working with personal branding um, and sort of retrained with a mentor in America and change tack I'd been looking for my niche and that became my niche really is um personal branding um and I suppose it's evolved over time to become more general branding so it might be working with the actual owners of a business uh might be their teams uh, or it might be products even uh so if I work with a garden designer I'll be down in the soil sort of photographing their gardens at different stages um or it might be someone a food um supplier I've actually been in a food factory with the hairnets and everything and <laughs> taking photographs. So it could be quite varied. Um, so it has evolved over the years. The other thing that I've always been running alongside my photography and photo shoots is um, teaching as well, um, which is quite natural for me. I trained as a teacher oh, quite a long time ago uh, in secondary school. That was art and design. So the photography teaching has come out of that as well. So it's sort of two elements to my to my work and my business. Right. OK. And what what where were, where do generally people use your photography? Is it in their um, is it in their marketing, like their, their websites, brochures, those type of things? It is. Yeah, it can be for their websites. Um, it can be for their newsletters. Um, it can be for their general sort of social media marketing um so anything at all really that they they need their photos a lot of headshots i do as well so that can be for their all their profiles which can go across many platforms um so yeah so it covers quite a bit okay great thank you and so tell me tell me a little bit more about how you got into photography where, where did where did it all start yeah so it's quite a long time ago so my degree was many moons ago and it was a joint degree so it was English and art and within the art side of things that is where I learned photography um, and back in the day it was film photography because that's all that there was available so it's you know that was a pretty cool way to learn it because you just had to learn the very bare bones of photography and how you do it you know there was no sort of point and shoot learning <laughs> in those days so I then had to work backwards as, as time went on. And I came into photography sort of about, again, about 10 years ago. Um, I'd had another career in publishing children's books. Um, so I came back to my photography probably through the kids, really. I was thinking, oh, what, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do? Um, and I ended up sort of volunteering for a prep school locally and helping in their art department. I started taking photographs for their projects. So it was very gradual. And I just sort of did have a bit of a light bulb moment thinking, yeah, this is what I want to do. Um, people started asking me to cover parties and, and casual events and things like that. And it sort of grew from there. Okay, so it's just, it's, it's evolved. So, so, you, you, so you started off with a, a, a passion, if you like, for photography. And, and oh, definitely, yeah. That sort of then, that's then turned into a, um, in, into a business. So, oh. why, um, and, and why... Why have your own business, uh, Flea, as a, as a photographer? You know, um, you know, it, uh, uh, why not be like an employee photographer or something mm. like that? Why did you decide to have your own business? Yeah, I mean, I suppose with the digital side of things, that was self-taught because, like I said, I had to sort of work backwards because I'd already learned in film photography, but then I had to know my way around a, a digital camera. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did that myself. I I also wanted to work around the kids um so I wanted to have the freedom um that having your own business entails um I didn't know I was going to become so commercial because I did start off doing sort of art exhibitions and things like that with my photography so I did take that tax that tax sort of um to begin with 
um and then it evolved like i said because doing events and people's photography for them and it sort of grew from there right okay and 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 you mentioned there about the um freedom um and 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 you know speaking to business owners i often when i ask them that question you know about um you know what what made you have your own business freedom often often comes up um oh, definitely. how have you but quite often i find that some business owners haven't managed to achieve that freedom because they are they, they feel then tied to their business and they've got to make you know more money and they find themselves earning sorry um working longer hours mm, how yes. is that has that freedom materialized for you and it, and, it, and if it has how do you balance that mm. well i don't i don't know if it's to do with sort of levels of success as well like how far you want to go because you could grow your business this far or this far, you know, so I think it depends how much you want to grow and how much you're going to, that's going to match maybe with how much you put in as well. So, but the beauty of that is that you can choose. So you can decide sort of how big you want to grow or do you want to keep it manageable so that you do maintain that freedom. So I think the main thing is choice. I suppose you do have that choice about avenues to go down who you connect with, you know, and how far you want to go with it. So that that is a beauty of it, I think, as well. Yeah, you, you raise a really good point there about about successfully in, in terms of, um, you know, what, what is success? <laughs> and actually, yeah. success is achieving what, what you want to achieve. Yes, I've thought about it a lot. I don't know if it's just I've got older or I don't know, but... But yes, you do. You need to sort of think, what what do I actually want? You know, because you could yeah. have a huge following on Instagram. And does that mean you've made success or does is it happiness that you've you found a bit of balance and, and you're, you know, your each day is filling you with joy or, you know, it's, you've got to find out what what it is you want, I suppose. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's the that is the key to success is 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 understanding what what you want and what's important to you you know some people yeah. might want to be multi-millionaires and yeah. big houses with yachts yeah. and swimming pools and all this sort of stuff but yeah. that may not be somebody somebody else's definition of success yeah. um so it's you know i think the definition of success is is really just achieving what what we want to to, to achieve personally and if we achieve that then we've been successful and that could be you know in our family lives and our friends and our our business and, and, oh. and everything else okay no, I, I i like that and um and, and Flo, you mentioned earlier about um uh what you you transitioned to you know from a um i don't know really what you called it before but you became the sort of the personal branding and and, and you said yeah. that you mentioned there that you used a, a mentor in a in america um mm. what 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 made you sort of decide to to speak to a mentor at that stage? Well, I mean, if I'm honest, I think she found me. Okay. <laughs> so it was more of a sort of, yeah, she invested heavily in Facebook ads and things. And this person just kept popping up. And I was like, oh, you know, you sort of bat things away. Uh, you're not quite sure what it's all about or whether it's trustworthy or those sort of things. But it did keep popping up. And I read a bit more and a bit more. And then, you know, it, it, it's that no like and trust I suppose eventually I got to know this person I thought oh yeah and and when I knew a bit more about her and what she was trying to achieve I thought oh yeah and I did sign up for a course which was wasn't hugely costly but it was very full of content it was it was amazing um and also I I joined something else where you could be in a whole group of photographers sort of worldwide um and yeah it was great for a while it really really sort of pivoted I was able to pivot into a completely different sort of arena so it was it was all good really yeah yeah so, sort of, so surrounding because it so <laughs> this was a was this a particular sort of photography mentor yeah definitely yeah. yes yeah was. so you were you also surrounding yourself there with with people that in in your industry that you could you could you know speak to bounce ideas off and is that definitely. yeah and, and I think that's I think that's one of the you know, really important things in, in in business is to surround yourself with the the right the right people. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, you know, being in business can be a, a, a very lonely place. Um, so actually, 
surrounding yourself with the the right people is really important and that's you know that goes from employees to to your circle of people that you that you speak to so okay no, I, I like it. and you know flee what what would you say has been your biggest challenge in um in creating a business oh gosh i mean i think there's many mm. <laughs> um I think there's there is the side of it yet yeah, that you can't it is difficult to rest you know if you do take rest or anything then you have to accept that things might be quiet for a while so you there is that element that you have to sort of keep on the hamster wheel I suppose you know you need to be connecting you need to be out there you need to cover your bases with social media um so I think it is yeah just knowing where your next clients are coming from that's always been a challenge it's always been there and I think that's the same pro for a lot of people um but I have been lucky you know most things have come from word of mouth really and it's sort of every now and again I do take stock and I think right where have all these clients come from and when you look back it is really interesting because you you see oh yeah so that I knew that person already and then they introduced me to them so you realize it is all about these connection closer connections that are necessary really to work with someone yeah okay um so yeah that's a oh, question but <laughs> no no it does i mean you know look I, I think you've probably um shared one of the, the the key challenges that a lot of business owners find which is you mentioned there about you know the next the next client where's the next where's the next piece of business coming from and and i think this is the thing when we when we become business owners um you know it's not just being or doing what we do so in 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 your case being a photographer in my case being a business coach mm. actually you take on all these other roles as well of well you become a marketer you become a salesperson okay. um, because you need yeah. to get the, the the business in um you know you've you've got to know a bit about finance um mm. if you start to recruit a team you've, you've got to start you know about hr and operations and systems and processes so suddenly what was your niche of being a photographer or my in my case a business coach you mm. you you're suddenly sort of learning all these other other skills as well and 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 sort of client generation is is one of them you, you yeah, mentioned, that is a, sorry that is, no i think that is a challenge because we're not we're not i don't think any of us are able to do it all it's quite difficult i mean you can you can do it but a lot of people do begin to outsource and i think when people do outsource they're very it can be quite a relief, I think, to a lot of people I've spoken to, um, because there were things that they might really hate or really don't get along with. They they can then pass to somebody else. Um, but yeah, I think it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it is a challenge, and, and look, and, and and I completely, you know, I, I completely agree with you. It's it's actually, um, you know, let, let's let's take marketing and sales as a certain thing. You know, if we've never been trained in in marketing or sales, why would we ever be good at it? Um, and therefore, perhaps we should consider outsourcing or employing somebody yeah. that actually is really, really good at that because they've they've been doing it for years, they've learned it, they've studied it, yeah. and they're really good at it. Um, so yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. So um, Flea, you mentioned there about, um, about word of mouth. Um, yeah. and, and your business coming uh, from from word of mouth. How how important are um, sort of re referrals to you? Oh no, they are really important. Yeah, yeah. I mean because it, well, it makes all the difference. I mean, if I'm hiring someone, it makes all the difference. You know, if someone says, "Oh, this person's been great," you you sort of want that reassurance before you start. I suppose that they're going to be good to work with. They're going to be do a good job. Um, so I think, yeah, word of mouth is important. Um, and it's just it's getting known as well so putting yourself out there um yeah. you know if you don't put yourself out there you won't get known so it's just it's so important to network really generally because you you can't just rely on you know your friends and smaller circles i think you just you have to get out there and um tell people what you do as well and and get to know people yeah no, no I, I agree I, I, and um it's, it's, this is a really interesting subject to me because I've, I've just um recently been writing a, a blog on this on on about um um about reviews and referrals and mm. i came across some really interesting statistics on on this um and you sort of really think about these 
you know this, but when you put it into numbers, so to give you a to, to give you a, a, a couple of numbers in relation to this, so there was some research that indicates that sixty nine percent of clients are willing to make referrals, but they rarely do so. So sixty nine percent of clients are willing to make referrals, but they rarely do so. And seventy two percent of that sixty nine percent. They say it's because they've not been asked. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't that amazing? And it is interesting because it's true. It is really hard to ask. Yeah. Some people have a real flow to their systems and they have an automatic thing that once they say invoice, then they send out a referral request or, uh, but it is a, it is a difficult thing. Yeah. I think and, and... People find that hard to ask. And then how many times do you ask? Do you ask once? Can I have a referral? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a challenge. But, it, but yeah. it just shows that if you do ask, mm. actually, and and because we think that we're, we're, we might be bothering people or yeah. about, but actually that statistic, 69% of clients are willing to make referrals, but but they're just not asked to do so. I mean, really other... interesting. I thought you were going to say time, like people don't have the time to do them, but that's interesting that they're willing. They're willing, yeah. And actually, the, the, there were some other statistics that I came across that 92% of con consumers trust referrals from oh. people they know. So 92% oh. trust referrals from people that they, they know. And they're, they're, they're four times more likely to buy when they're oh. referred by somebody else. Oh. It's an amazing sort of thing that we yeah, just get into um, those those referrals. So, so Flea, tell, tell me a little bit, um, your... And, and I know you've mentioned this um, to, to me before about your particular niche in photography, because there's, yeah. um, if you don't mind me saying, there's, a, there's a, a, a lot of photographers out there. There's a lot of business coaches out there. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about your niche in photography. You mentioned that it's personal branding, but you've got, you've got, there's a little, something in particular that you like to focus on, isn't there? Oh, yes. So um, it's my style is sort of more naturalistic. So mm -hmm. this is something I'm trying to, you know, have gain with leverage you know, because it's I perhaps not focused on it so much in the past, but it's so evident, you know, because people do often have a style whether they're doing headshots or whatever. And, you know, some people might have a very serious style, which is very antique looking or very elaborate or you know, very luxury. Mine, mine is very sort of simple, naturalistic joyful you know I like to bring those elements out of people um they're not heavily edited um so I that that's what I like to have what well, let's just say as my style so you know it's people that want that sort of thing so maybe you know companies have had stuffy very serious pictures before and they might want to branch out and, and go for that more naturalistic style they might even be outside but the expressions and the poses and things like that are more natural as well. So it's it's the whole, all the elements really. Um, yeah, and I, I know. I remember when we spoke before. You, you you say that you like to try and capture that moment when somebody's laughing as well, don't you? That's the, I do. Yeah, I do. And it's it's funny. I had I had a really challenging lady. This is going back a bit, but I had a lady who wanted a headshot. Oh, it's actually for her family. So it's a professional headshot, but she wanted to share it. Um, maybe I think she might have hit a certain age or something. I can't remember, but she she sort of informed me at the very beginning that I I she don't I don't smile. <laughs> I was like, oh god, and I was quite worried. I was thinking, wow, what are we going to do? And it was it was it started off quite difficult and quite challenging. And then I decided to introduce some props. I thought this lady really does need a prop, whether it's a cup of tea or a a book or some flowers. She needed something. Um, so she said, oh no, I've got a really good book that I love. So she chose this book. She was a French speaker, so a French book. And she opened this book and just started reading away. So, and then I could get on with my thing. And I did. I managed to capture this shot. And it was the shot of the day with this lovely natural laugh. And it was just a beautiful portrait. And we I'm so glad because we actually got somewhere, you know, we got to where we wanted to go. And, and I think she was amazed because she told me she does not smile. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, that's a great story. And I think, I think actually that, that, demonstrate something in photography that actually yeah getting getting to know the person and who the person is and what you know might make them laugh or what helps them to be natural but actually yeah. I think there's a lesson in there for business as well in that actually people buy from people oh. um and actually if you 
take the time and effort to to get to know the person that you're speaking to what it is that they need what it is that they want what their likes are what their dislikes actually it becomes uh, a lot easier to match your services and products to, to what it is that they actually need because you've built up that 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 relationship you know more about them so i think there's a key message in there for not just in photography but in in, in business um yeah definitely yeah i agree so, so flea what what would you say to anyone thinking of going into business so into business particularly or, or photography or just well, business in general, yeah. but, but, but yeah, you can relate it to um to, to photography. Well, business in general, I, I would say, I mean, this is something I wish I'd done a lot sooner, and it, and it is to network. Yeah. Um, I just don't think it was sort of, because I worked in publishing for, I think, 10 years, and my network was sort of all around me, and I might have gone to events and conferences, and but my companies were big companies. Um, I had lots of customers because I was in sales. So that was my environment. That was my network. And it, it just wasn't on my agenda when I first went into photography. I just, I might have had a network, lay of, say, of school mums that were around me. Um, but no, it wasn't on my agenda at all. So it's come to me quite a bit later. I think 2019, right at the beginning of there, or maybe 2018, I, I sort of started dabbling in some networking. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is new. <laughs> So I would I would recommend that I said as soon as possible and a lot of people may just know that these days they might just younger people might just know that's what they have to do but I I didn't back then um, and it's just so valuable. And is there a specific piece of advice that you'd give somebody when uh, you know when they were networking? Yes, I mean I think you know the days are gone where you do that sort of hard sell <laughs> immediately <laughs> when you've just met someone and shaken their hand. Um, yeah, no, it's very much, which suits me, it's very much getting to know people, uh -huh. um, you know, and just and just think about their character and just finding out about them, really. I think that curi curiosity, if you've got it naturally, is quite helpful, um, which I do have. And if, you, you know, if you have a love of people, then that, that's also good. I mean, I'm quite introverted, but I'm a sort of chatty introvert and I, I love to socialise. I might get tired afterwards, but I, I really enjoy that process um so Which, yes it's just getting to know people really and putting your business sort of just at the back tell people but like it's not you know you're not there for the hard sell you're there to get to know people i think that, i think that's a good that, that's a great bit of advice actually. make it about them not not about about yeah. you and, yeah build up that relationship and that trust so no, yeah. thank you that's a great piece of advice and look um one final question Flea. What what's What's the best advice that you would give an 18-year-old you? Oh, God. Oh, that's really hard. <laughs> um, oh, that's really stumped me, actually. I mean, because I, when I was 18, I sort of, I was quite good at just sort of working stuff out and quite driven, I think, in a, in a funny way. I don't know where it came from, really. Yeah. It wasn't really from my parents, really. They just, you know, I was very self-sufficient. And I thought, right, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And I trained as a teacher. And, you know, these are all my ideas. Um, so I wasn't really struggling, I don't think, at 18. I just finished my A-levels. But then I might teach my 18-year-old self that you don't have to go a traditional route. You don't have to go and work for a big company. You don't have to. Because at that age, you could afford probably to start your own business quite comfortably. And you've got it all ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would, you know, my middle son's quite entrepreneurial already and I would, yeah, I would celebrate that and, and congratulate that because it's not really taught in schools, that sort of thing, is it? It's all about, you can be this job or you could be a librarian or you could be, I think it's still, I feel like it's still done that way and there's so many other pathways. Yeah, like that. look, some, some some great things that you've mentioned there about you know just being being driven and, and and working things out. But but yeah, go go your own route. You know you don't mm. don't, don't need to follow the the normal route. And I like, I share your views. I mean that um you know our education system is great, but there are sort of certain flaws in it, and 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 it's designed to um to help you to get a job when you leave yeah. school. But actually, yeah. you know, my philosophy, and look, I could go through a whole new um, discussion on this, so I won't do that. But, you know, my philosophy is actually we we need more business owners. 
yeah. you know, the the SMEs are what you know the UK thrives on. Yeah. So actually, we need people coming out of schools and thinking, I'm going to set up my own business. Not necessarily that they're going to do it the day they come out of school, but they've got a plan to set up their business at some point in the future. And I think there should be yeah. some more education around that. But um, that's that's my personal opinion. But um, yes, I agree. But some great, look, some great advice there. So um, look. Fleet, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today and sharing more about uh, you and your business and your journey. So thank you very much. Oh, thanks very much, Simon. It's been great to be here. Thank you. Great. Thank you.